You're listening to The Grunt Workers Show, and I'm your host, James C. Zolman. Here's one of my favorite snippets from this episode. So that problem I'm trying to solve by having the cool insights, literally, that our guests share and condensing it into what I call a one-page SOP, Standard Operating Procedure Formula. Welcome to the Grunt Workers Show. I am floored to have this guest on our show today. His name is Raul Hernandez Ochoa. He's a business coach and consultant that I recently met this year, but he's doing amazing things. He's the hashtag do good work podcast host. He's an author and public speaker, and it's, it's a real pleasure and a treat to have you here today, Raul. Thank you for, for being here. James, thank you, man. It's uh, lovely that we're able to do this, you know, virtual remote. I'm in California. You're in a different part of the, the, the U.S., uh, Utah, but it's, it's amazing to be connected here with you, man. Yeah, yeah, it is. I, I love technology, especially in, in today's day and age where we need it desperately. So this is, yeah. this is a real treat. We're plugged in, man. Yep. So, so tell us, what, well, what are you excited about right now? What are you working on? What's the big thing for Raul Oh, dude, the your biggest thing right now is insights. So for, for the podcast that I run, I get to talk to a lot of incredible people just like you. And everyone has a story to share, but also a strategy that others can implement. And I don't know about you, but I know that I've read like dozens of books, audiobooks, Kindles, eBooks, listen to hundreds of podcasts, like all these cool stuff, right? But then when it comes to applying what you learn, you're like, wait, let me go back to that page or wait, what was that highlight? Wait, what do I need to do? Wait, what was that audio? Which podcast was it? So that problem I'm trying to solve by having the cool insights, literally, that our guests share and condensing it into what I call a one-page SOP, Standard Operating Procedure Formula. So let's say you come on the show and you talk about how to do a product development or product launches, whatever it may be that your expertise. I'm condensing that and then publishing that so that our, um, our audience, our members for insights, can just plug and play and build a nice little library of strategies, tactics, mindsets, frameworks that they can just literally forward to their management team or just implement themselves. I think that's absolutely brilliant. That's awesome. I'm, I'm really excited to see that um, launch when it, it's, it's coming right up, isn't it? In fact, by the time this show airs, it may have already been launched, but when's the launch date and how can people access that? Well, the cool part about the podcast is that uh, we're in the future, but also in the past at the same time, because this is publishing in a couple of weeks. Yeah. So uh, we're launching December 8th. Okay. (laughs) (laughs) December 8th. So you just have to go to dogoodwork.io forward slash insights with an S insights, and you'll be able to get everything there and lock in some, uh, some really cool goodies for, uh, for, for the launch. That's brilliant. I love, I love this idea. How did you come up with it? I have to be honest with you. I've always wanted to start something around the community that we were building, but I also wanted to look at it through scale. Um, Cause I know that I'm very limited. Like when I do one-on-one coaching clients, I can't do that many at a time. Cause I either go insane. I don't get deliver the right value, like enough value. And I really care about, you know, quality. If that's, if there's anything that I care about the most is quality. Um, so I, I knew I wanted to do something that if I, did a, had a hundred or a thousand or 10,000 people, it would still involve me focusing on quality, but I'm not being overwhelmed. Um, and then I talked to smarter entrepreneurs than me, mentors, friends, and they told me, you know what, think about something around this. This is what I would be interested in. And then I made the offer and I sold it before I ever, <laughs> ever made the product. So I got validation from the market and then now we're building it and launching it. So that's incredible. Now the one page SOP that if, if I recall, you mentioned that, that you've written about that before. Yes. So in, so I wrote a book called productive profits Mm -hmm. Uh, with that book specifically, I wrote it more like as a manual, as like a action guide for entrepreneurs and business owners, Uh, almost out of necessity. Again, I was pushed by smarter entrepreneurs, my mentor, John Morgan, like smarter people than me that had been there, done that. Uh, Cause apparently like I had, I've worked with other companies, but I had like this nugget around, you know, growing companies and scaling. And I didn't know that value. Once I put it into a book, you can see that it's like a framework where you can follow along and actually 
do it yourself and actually learn like, well, my business can run like a machine and then I can manage humans organically, not like machines because humans, it's impossible to run them like machines or not machines, <laughs> simply put. But I wrote that in the book. Um, and from there, it's, it's, it's helped businesses. It's transformed the way that people look at their business. And, and I'm proud to say that it's been pretty fruitful for, for the, the founders that have read it. That's awesome. That is, is a, a, a really unique marketing combination for yourself and for your consulting brand. You've got the book, you've got the podcast, and you've got part of the podcast is Insights. That's the product name? That's the product. Right? Okay. Yeah. Awesome. So, so you have Insights with these one-page SOPs from what you've learned from podcast guests on your show, and you're turning this into a knowledge base you mentioned that you, you've, you pre-sold it. Who did you pre-sell it to and, and how did that look for you based on this info product and this idea? It was just one simple pre-sale, but that's all I needed for the, because this was a serial entrepreneur that I respect. He wanted me to build it. I'm like, okay, cool. And then I built it in a day and I showed it. He's like, okay, cool. I'll be your first buyer. And like, okay, cool. That's awesome. That's awesome. Let's get this up and running. Um, but that for me, it's, it's getting validation early on, but it's also like, um, there's a community component that's behind the actual knowledge base because knowledge is great, but without connections, it's meaningless. And I think what we've learned in 2020 is having connections, but actually having relationships behind the connection. So one of the things that I'm working to do is like, it's going to be all delivered via email, but that doesn't mean that it stops there. That means that you can still communicate with me. You can communicate with other, other members. You can communicate with podcast guests. Like we're putting it in out there that um like let's say you, you were a you were a guest on the podcast and the show right mm -hmm. if, if we make an insight around what you shared then we're going to have your name highlighted there because you're the person that shared this 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 wisdom with us and then people can reach out to you and you'll have exclusive access to to the community and that can either grow your brand whatever you're promoting but and on top of that you can build an authentic relationship with another human being somewhere else in the world and I think right now, moving forward, that's kind of what we're yearning for. And we're, we're trying to get the most out of with this remote world. Like it's on Zoom, it's on Skype, whatever you're using. But at the end of the day, business is done with humans and people need to connect with the other person on the end of the screen. So I think fostering that community, I'm excited to where this can, this can grow into. That's awesome. Very cool. So are there any additional marketing steps that, that you plan to take to grow this community? I, I'm a huge fan of validating it with one sale and then just going for it. And I think that's, the, that's extremely exciting to me. I absolutely love that. I do think the idea is brilliant too. So I'm excited to see it take off. But what else are you doing on the marketing side to launch a new product within your consultancy or business? There's a few things that we're doing. Um... If I'm going to give you like a 30,000 foot view, we're doing a email promotion. We're doing um, like, like promoters, like we're getting people. So I, I'm heavy on relationships, right? So I'm heavy on like you and I have had a lot of conversations before this conversation, right? So yes. it's a conversation, a relationship that we trust. Mm -hmm. And I'm, I care about building um, not 10,000 relationships, but really solid, small number of relationships, right? So but sure. the quality is what matters. What we're doing is for those people that I know that, you know, I, I trust and we have a relationship formed, we're, we're getting them access to insights and for them to promote and share it. Because I care more about the vibe, the network effect of one person brings in three people as opposed to one person brings on one person. Sure. So we're doing that as an internal launch. Uh, we're also doing a LinkedIn strategy, just doing um, not your spammy outbound, but just doing relationship building over LinkedIn, um, but at scale. So that's going to be something that we're doing there. And then just your simple remarketing ads, which, you know, it's not too sophisticated. We're not spending tens of thousands of dollars. It's just like simple remarketing to get people to know the offer and be in front of them. Sure. I love that. You know, one thing about you, Raul, that really caught my eye and sort of spun this, this really cool uh, professional relationship and kicked it off, which, um, w which I've, I've really loved to see how it's developed. Thank you, by the way, for having me on your show. That's the hashtag do good work podcast. Um, and I believe my show is getting published here in a couple months. Is that correct? Yeah, it's in a couple weeks, actually. Oh, a couple weeks. Oh, for some reason, I thought it was at the beginning of the year. That's great. Awesome. Well, then we're in a couple weeks, a couple yeah. weeks away. <laughs> yeah, we are. That's true. That's true. Okay. 
So, so what really kicked things off is you have a unique approach on LinkedIn. You just talked about LinkedIn as, as far as a scalable approach. What really caught me, and you were the only one that's ever done this, and I, have, I, I don't have a lot of connections, but, but I have about 6,500, and most of them are marketers and entrepreneurs. And I really, really love that community that, that I've built there, um, of which you, you're a part of. When we started messaging back and forth, I think you kicked things off. And it, it, was, it was automated, but it felt very personalized and incredible. And it was an audio message, something that is only accessible on LinkedIn through a mobile app. Mm -hmm. Can you elaborate on and sort of spill the beans a, a, about how you scale that and, and how you make that possible? Because you're able to grow a network, um, a, a very good network and scale that. The, the, the way that you were doing things from, from what I can tell. Yeah, no, it's worked phenomenally. I actually had to stop that because it overbooked my calendar. And I think that's an, a problem a lot of people <laughs> like to hear. Um, but you said a word that's a trigger word and a lot of people don't like, especially when it comes, how do I care about relationships and quality and use automation? Sure. Uh, well, the A word is not a bad word if you know how to use it correctly. Yeah, it felt um, personalized. So it, it is, and there is, there is intention behind it. So there's a lot of intention behind it. So I mean, the strategy anyone can use is a really simple strategy. You create a list on Sales Navigator, so you have to buy Sales Navigator, fork up whatever that cost is, mm -hmm. um, buy Sales Nav, and then truly cater and focus. Who do you want to connect with? Who do you actually want to build a relationship with? Not just who do you want to sell? Because if you're selling products and you're doing business wrong, you're building relationships and a product is an output of that relationship, right? So the first thing is obviously getting a solid um, LinkedIn list, sales nav list, and then being able to cater like who's posted, who do I want to talk to, what's the value that I can deliver, and always focusing on permission-based marketing. Never, here's what I got, do it now. Like, I don't know about you, but every time I get a message that's like a thousand paragraphs long, and then they have their calendar link, I'm like, well, thanks, but no thanks. Like, I'm not even going to read it or ever respond to you. Um, so yes, that's I get the first the step. <laughs> yeah. The second step is to building affinity. Uh, cause if you, you know, we're, we're all caring about you know, a lot of us care about ourselves most of the times. So you're always checking the notifications in LinkedIn. You're always checking the notifications of like, Oh, it looks like James, like my post. Oh, he comment. Oh, he endorsed me. Oh, he's doing all these cool things. And then when you get a message from that same person, three, four, five days later, you're going to listen to it. And because it's an audio message, and it's unique and it's their voice. You're actually connecting, again, more human connection. Now, I'm not going to take credit for this strategy. This is actually a strategy from one of my clients, uh, Jimmy Coleman over at Lead Baller. Uh, they're doing some incredible work to be able to get whoever you want to speak to at scale because, so we all know in sales, the numbers game works. It doesn't matter how you play. The numbers game will always work because it's math. The issue with the numbers game is you're treating humans, not a machine, as a number. And it sucks with your reputation. It sucks with like the other person on the end of the line. It sucks for building a relationship. But if you're able to authentically personalize your approach, make it seem, uh, you know, highly valuable, ask for permission. Don't force anything down people's throats. And then move and cater that relationship. Something will build out of it. That takes two things. It takes patience and also takes maturity. Because Patience is a subset of learning maturity, business maturity is what I like to call it. Um, so they, they created their own like proprietary system to do that at scale, but that's the strategy. You and I can do that right now. I, because I've run other parts of the company, I wasn't able to do that every single day because it does take a nice chunk of time to manually go out to requests, to comment on posts and do stuff like that, but it's authentic. And then when you actually, you know, connect with that person and they respond, then you start building the relationship. And it's not like, oh, just take care of it for me. It's here's that person. Let me build a real relationship. What do they care about? Who are they? What are some connection ties? And where can I add value? And do, and if, are they interested in what I can help them with? If they are, then let's have that conversation. So that's uh, Jimmy's, you know, strategy over on LinkedIn. He's over at leadballer.com. And I uh, know they're doing some amazing work and they're, they're going to be doing some things beyond just audio, like customized video, personalized, like it's insane the level of personalization that's possible with technology, but never missing out on the human component 
Sure. It's, it's automation with a human factor, with, with a real authentic factor in there. That's what matters because there is automation on LinkedIn already, not within LinkedIn itself, all these third party tools that are yeah. all against the terms of service. Yeah. But people use it at scale to spam like crazy. So this approach is absolutely incredible. Um, thank you so much for sharing that. I, I think it's incredibly valuable for the B2B side, but I've seen a lot more B2C entering the message spam side of LinkedIn <laughs> when it could be so much more authentic. Mm -hmm. um, one thing that I'm seeing, even though it's slightly B2B, is I'm starting to get all sorts of health messages to oh. CEOs to get ripped and it's all spammy and there's no, nothing authentic about it. It's, uh, it's crazy. Do you see those? I mean, no, maybe people, screen. yeah, people maybe say like, oh, he doesn't, he's, he does not healthy. We don't need to talk to him. That's terrible. <laughs> I wish I want to get ripped. Come on. <laughs> hey, yeah. Anybody who's listening to this, if you're doing that, Raul's LinkedIn profile, go find it. He needs yeah, to it's an open target. Let's see what you got. <laughs> no. Um, yeah, I've been getting those a lot, but I've been seeing a little bit of more consumerization in LinkedIn. Mm. And I heard the other day from, from somebody that's, they didn't realize the power of LinkedIn for personal connections in the business space. They always thought it's just another social network. It's just another boring place. Oh, no, yeah. But it's, you build authentic relationships. I've been on more calls, just a mutual introductory call, no sales pitch whatsoever. There are a few that sometimes it's inadvertently salesy. Um, typically, it's them trying to sell me. Yeah. But it's more like what you and I have have built a professional standard relationship. We met on a video call. We discussed a podcast. And, and uh, in fact, I've been inspired by some of your work to start the Grunt Worker Show here, um, which awesome. I think is awesome. It, it probably wouldn't have happened or I wouldn't have been pushed over the edge had I not met you and been introduced to you in person through a video call. But that happens on LinkedIn. Mm -hmm. I don't see that happening anywhere else at the moment as it hasn't happened to me on Facebook, um, Instagram, Twitter, um, Twitter, I feel like is a good B2B place too, but are, are you seeing this anywhere else? No, the, the unique piece about LinkedIn is because when your intention on LinkedIn is either focusing on your career or focusing on getting a job. So when you're, those are the two focuses of the user. I know LinkedIn caters to a different type of, you know, active user. And the average, I think the average income revenue per user per LinkedIn, it's a higher average income than everyone who uses Facebook, but again, it's a different market. Sure. Now, again, the, the one thing that I'm not afraid of, but I don't want LinkedIn just to become a spam fest, which is oh, moving yeah. closely to like, they're, they're mimicking some of the things that Facebook is doing stories, um, and stories and all this stuff. Like I get it. I get it. You have to compete, but it, it never should go away about creating a, a real relationship with the other person. And like, I know, and I'm talking about that too much. Right. But that's actually the strategy. What are you doing right now in your marketing that you can add personalization and be intentional around it? Because if everyone else is legitimately not doing that, how easy is it for you to be a little different and win that, that new deal just because you cared about including their birthday or cared about congratulating them for their kid's third birthday or uh, just small, small things that for you, for you, like, well, I don't care about that. I need to sell. Like, well, you should care about that because you're selling to another human being that's building a long-term relationship. Your customer lifetime value plays a role in it. The relationship and experience plays a role into it. Like there's all these different things. And, you know, thankfully, I'm glad that there's a lot of spammers on LinkedIn because when I outbound and reach to people, it's authentic and it's unique and it totally makes you look different from everyone else. Yes, I completely agree. It, uh, it caught my eye and I feel like I get spam all day long. So, so nice work, <laughs> Raul. That's absolutely brilliant. Earlier and throughout the show, you've focused on relationships and building an authentic relationship, which I absolutely love. Let's get a, a, a little bit personal, maybe, but maybe it's professional only. Mm -hmm. It's been said that you are the average of the five people that you surround yourself with the most. Oh, gosh. So who would you say you are the average of on that relationship level? Who is oh, Raul? And it, it can be the professional side to you, too. You mentioned, um, it, well, was it Jeff Morgan? John Morgan. John Morgan. You've mentioned he's, him as, a, as a mentor and, and somebody who 
you say is smarter than you, which I think you're absolutely brilliant. So I, then I'm, that's hard to believe, but maybe in his niche, his strengths are probably different. Absolutely. Um, but, but yeah, who, who are those people for you? Who are your heroes, well, so to speak? My heroes. That's a big well, I guess question. maybe that's a different question. Yeah. Right? Okay. Let's, well, let's, let's look, look at the average. So, I mean, yeah, let's do that. First. I mean, to be honest with you, with quarantine, with COVID and all that stuff, like I haven't been hanging out a lot. <laughs> I hang out a lot with my clients. Let's just put it that way. And they're all doing amazing work. So I think that's inspiring. Um, I hang out a lot with my puppy. So I guess that's uh, <laughs> my little golden retriever. So I guess that's uh, <laughs> so you're like a puppy. Okay. I'm like a puppy. I don't know. Just a joke. No, but yeah. um, I think it's mostly, that's a really good question. Cause around the online network, the podcast for me has been both exponential growth for personal as well as for business. Cause yeah, cool. We made insights. That's going to be amazing. It's going to help a lot of people. I'm super excited about the global community that we're building. Like impact is important. But on top of that, I get to network with entrepreneurs at all walks of life who've been there and done that and have different experiences that I can learn from. And thankfully, I've gotten the podcast where almost every single day or at least two times a week, minimum, I have an interview. So I'm learning about them. I'm talking to cool founders and I'm getting to learn about them. So I get that kind of exposure. I have my you know, coaching exposure that I get support from others who are, you know, wiser and older, right? Who helped me down that path. Family for sure is always important. Like, I don't know, like family units important to me. So I always hang out with family, wife, uh, parents, you know, friends as much as we can. Um, I haven't been doing it lately, but typically I work out with a friend in his garage at 5 a.m. So that's important too, to get that grit. (laughs) Yes. Get that grit going in the morning, but I would say I'm a pretty simple guy just doing that. And then just locally here uh, with my uh, local church. So it's, it's not, that's pretty, uh, it's pretty simplistic. And if you count the ocean as a person, which I would, I wouldn't, but it is uh, definitely worth it's, it's cause like it's, it's nice to be able to relax at the ocean. It is absolutely. Well, th- well, thank you for sharing that. I think every person learns differently and they pull um, certain skills and strengths differently from either groups of people or individual people. So I, I, I think that uh, that works. I, I, I think that's a, a very insightful and profound answer. So thank you for sharing. Raul. Of course. Let's, let's go back to that question that I kind of double stacked on you inadvertently. Um, who, who would you say your heroes are in life? Yeah. I don't know about like heroes in, 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 it sounds like it's business heroes, entrepreneurial heroes, personal heroes, spiritual heroes. Or like, it's it's uh, it's kind of an open-ended question, really. I it think is. I like to learn about other people and understand their strengths and weaknesses. Mm-hmm. Um, so there's that. Obviously, on the spiritual side, there's a lot of different heroes that I look up to. People have been there, done that, and I think it's important to to be able to be able to know those who've gone on a similar journey as you even though it might be a different time frame, time zone, and be able to relate. What did they learn? Because the only two ways to learn experience is through your own actual doing and learning and failing and others' experiences. So you can save a lot of years and troubles by, by doing so. Um, but I wouldn't say that I have pinned up heroes on my wall sure. you know, in the business world, really. Okay. Um. If, if there was one person that you would say, hey, everybody in business absolutely should listen to this guy besides yourself. <laughs> and, and I know you wouldn't say yourself, but uh, who would that be? Do you have one person that you would say, hey, at any point in business, you need to listen to this guy or girl? That's a really good question. I'm not sure if there is an answer. There is a series of books that you can listen to or, or read. I, I do audiobooks all the time, but mm-hmm. it's um which series then would that be? I would definitely learn about the brain, how the brain works, how your brain works. Uh, brain Rules was a really good book that I that I really love by John Medina. Um, you know, funny enough, reading anything about the brain, even like baby brain development, you learn about human brain development and people and how they operate. And it's kind of cool to be able to do that, um, to be able to learn pretty much like how to work with others. Um, Other books, you know, this is, let's talk about evolution in business, I suppose. The first evolution, like when you're a startup, you need to do sales. So if that's something that you need to focus on, 
read books around selling or closing or getting your clients or being proficient in the, the close methodology. I think um, um, Spin Selling is a pretty solid book around that to really help Neil Rackman. Uh, it's a pretty simple methodology, but I think to the basics work. Um, next it's up, authentic. once you have- That's one thing I like about Spin. It's very much about the authentic listening to their individual needs. Yes, and then creating oh, yeah. a solution yes. based on that very yes. authentic need. I can see why sense. you would like Spin. <laughs> <laughs> it was recommended to me again uh, by, a, by a Silicon Valley vet who was like my first mentor out of college or in college actually, but uh, that was that Spin. The next stage in evolution is obviously incorporating marketing and even business development. You know, I had an interesting conversation this morning with a, on my podcast with a business development expert, and he separated sales from marketing from business development. So sales is early stage, like your, your startup, you need to get nose to grindstone, get those sales. Then it's business development, building relationships, expanding relationships, networking, authenticity, JV partners, et cetera. Then there's marketing. And you, if you notice in the bookshelves for, for, or the top sellers, those are the three most important pieces because where are business struggling the most? Sales These three market. things. Yeah. Yeah. Sales, marketing. And then when it comes to the next uh, level, I would supp suppose of, of growing, it's, it's um, business pains, growing pains. How do I make sure we're profitable? How do I hire the right people? How do I fire the right people? So then it comes to like more operational. Then the next level is management. Like, okay, management, leadership, mindset. And then the epitome, I guess, like the top hot Maslow's business hierarchy is self-actualization purpose and like beliefs and then lifestyle and then like culture um, they all play a role in business you can't just leave one and fo focus on the other but i think there's a different evolution towards that wow that's uh that's a fascinating cycle to learn and understand and i and i appreciate that i think that um that learning and choosing to read materials in each phase that, that you see yourself in as a listener to the show um, will we'll definitely help you along that path. So, so that's a great insight. And, and thank you for mentioning some specific titles. Um, absolutely love that. I also love psychology as well. So I'm, I'm really happy that you brought up the brain and understanding human nature uh, through the brain specifically. Oh, yeah. Um, it's always good to see uh, what facts say, not what opinions say. <laughs> yes. Yes. I completely, yeah, I feel the same way. That's awesome. So, so Raul, what's life like for you outside of the professional realm? Do you have any hobbies, anything that people don't know about you that should and that they can find out by listening to the show? Uh, usually if you follow on Instagram, you'll see more of the personal side. Like I, I do surf when I can, not very good at it, but um, I surf. We got three boards in the garage right now. That's awesome. uh, I got a golden retriever puppy. She's about 21 weeks old. So she's definitely a handful, <laughs> uh, which is fun. Uh, what else? Um, I've been trying intermittent fasting, right? Eating, eating until three o'clock in the afternoon, which is, it's a pretty good habit or health. It's just good to have self-discipline. Mm -hmm. And I love, uh, I love challenging myself with working out, like uh, to make sure that we can do good exercises. And uh, I'm, again, pretty simple guy and uh, maybe a cool story to, to excite the audience. Uh, yes. When I went surfing once in La Jolla Shores, so yeah, I'm not sure if you've ever been to La Jolla. I know you're from. Oh yeah, I've Mido. been. To La Jolla. Hello. So you know sh the oh, Shores, nice right? Yeah. Okay, so in La Jolla Shores, you know the pier. Yes. Okay, so there's yeah. Scripps Pier. For everyone who's listening right now, there's Scripps Pier. You can look it up. It's like probably the most world famous biotech pier in in San Diego, right? So there's Scripps Pier. So I was surfing over there, or coming down. It was a summer day. I think it was June or July. Um, this was after I lost my Apple watch surfing. So that's another oh, no. story. <laughs> that's another story. Um, but we were go, I was going in and then there, there's nurse sharks in La Jolla. Mm -hmm. And if you know anything about nurse sharks, they're not dangerous. They don't bite. I mean, they bite if you kick them. Right. But I was going and I was on a small board. I think it was like a five, eight boards. I was trying to surf a five, five, eight fish. I go over and then I, I'm like maybe three feet of shallow water. And then I just hover over a nurse shark. And then you're like, oh crap, this is it. Like oh, no, you're gonna land the thing out. that you've, you've always <laughs> thought about, but then now it's actually happening. And then you have time to process that it's happening. But at the same time, you're also freaking out. So then I freaked out. Like I shook off the board, try to paddle as fast as I can. But then I knew I was extremely safe. 
when the shark freaked out <laughs> and swam away. That's okay, cool. If I, if I freaked out and that freaked out the shark, we're good. That means he's not, he or she is not coming after me. But it was probably, I want to say four feet, five foot max. So it wasn't like huge, wow. huge. But when you see that fish under you uh-huh. on a surfboard, you're like, oh gosh. <laughs> And you know their teeth are really sharp, even if they're a docile shark. But yeah, they're a docile yeah. shark. I mean, don't kick it. I'm not going to say go to La Jolla and go pet them. But yeah. uh, wow, that's amazing. So surfing, you've got your puppy. Um, you're married. Where? Uh, so so I I guess if if you want to mind, where were you born, and what led you up to the stage that you're in professionally? Um, but let's, let's definitely hear how you met your wife throughout that. If you don't mind, just a quick little high level bio of oh, that's a funny story. Cause it depends who you ask her or me. <laughs> so well, if you ask her, her, we met through a oh, virtual for a mutual friend from a mutual friend. If you ask me, we met at a concert when we actually physically did meet at a concert, but I also had an extra ticket that I needed to sell. And it was a Thursday night. And she was going to go study. And I do air quotes because like who studies at seven o'clock for a test for, I don't know if it was the next day or the next week, but like, <laughs> I and knew, she happens I mean, to be near this concert. She well, was walking from the library. So oh, the concert's next okay. to the library. Okay. So, so she, she legitimately so does study at seven <laughs> o'clock because she's a nerd. It's okay. I'm a nerd. Um, yep. But then I'm like, okay, if you're really doing this right now, like, does it make sense to study because you're doing it last minute? What's the point? Just come to the concert. And I was also, I got a ticket that I need to sell. So <laughs> that's how we met. And, but we didn't start talking for like two years after that. So. Wow. That's awesome. So well, was that at school then? Were you both in the same school? That was at San Diego state. I was transferring from community college and she was going there. Okay. Awesome. Yeah, so was- so you, did, did you, uh, you received a bachelor's at San Diego state well, you, you were born and raised there then in the San Diego area? Is that I right? was in Mexico, but I came to San Diego when I was two. So that's awesome. That's not big of a difference. Yeah. Yeah. That's very cool. I was in the Pacific Ocean at two years old. So yeah. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> no, I love that. I love Mexico. Um, my, uh, my wife's family is from Mexico. So yeah, I absolutely oh, love my. that. I love Latin America. That is very, very cool. So you moved to the U.S. when you were two. You eventually ended up at San Diego State. What, what well, was there an impetus growing up that, that drove you into business or to being this, uh, this coach and consultant and author? I never dreamed about being coach or consultant or author. That was all through, you know, mentorship and coaching and like people telling me, Hey, you should probably do this. You're pretty good at it. I'm like, okay, I'll try. Um, I was actually, and it's surprising because a lot of the stuff that I do is around quote unquote systems, process, growth. And a lot of people hate and loathe and look at like their roll their eyes. Oh my gosh. Like, yes, I get it. But I'm also, I came from an animation background. So I'm really? actually a creative. Yeah. So I, I want I dreamt of going to art school and I, wow. I think I caught you. I think it was either DreamWorks or um, Pixar. I think it was DreamWorks that I had a conversation with in high school, like so, some animation director. And she was like really cool enough to respond to my email, my AOL email back in the really? day. Oh, And uh, I was doing graphic design. Yeah, I was doing graphic design. The graphic design professor or teacher at high school saw that I had a skill set. So then we focused on that because I I loved, I love, I drew up drawing cartoons, making my own animations. It takes a long time to make an animation, but it's fun. Mm -hmm. But then, um, you know, I cared about creating, doing something fun. And, you know, you're in college and I think it was around 2010 or 2011, anywhere between 10 or 12. Uh, I was in community college and then, um, Then I saw on San Diego State's website, a company called Solo Eyewear. And Solo Eyewear was like just sunglasses, but they donated 10% of their proceeds to funding cataract surgery for someone in India. I'm like, oh, that's pretty cool. Because, okay, this is is, to put it blunt, but I was thinking there's kids down the street. So like down the freeway, they're not kids. Obviously, they're students, they're adults, but there's kids down the street creating an impact through selling sunglasses. And I thought that was phenomenal. So I didn't know about entrepreneurship. So it was entrepreneurship, no less. Yeah. So I didn't know about that. Mm -hmm. And it was thanks to, you know, Jenny's listening, Jenny Amaraneni. She's uh, an incredible human being. Like she inspired me a lot, her and, uh, and the solo team. Um, 
but yeah, they, they, uh, they created that company and I was like, well, I got to learn more about this. And then I learned about the entrepreneurship management center, which is now the lab and center at San Diego state. And I quickly applied for their deadline to go. And I don't know how I got in, but it was a tough interview and I got in it was like a group of 12 kids out of the entire business school. The unit was like one unit for the entire semester. So if you know, for college talk, like it's like nothing in terms mm-hmm. of the units, like we're yeah. taking four or five unit classes. Yep. But uh, I can tell you easily that that was my college experience. That uh, one unit program for like a week, like I think it was one hour a week or one hour, whatever it was, but that program probably shaped everything for college. Because college was, I mean, it's not easy, but it, come on, college was easy. And <laughs> that class was not, that was like real world experience, talking to real entrepreneurs, founders from all walks of life. Like, like I learned how to paddleboard with a co-founder of Volcom. I was in the same room with the guy who was doing the, the Nest's lawsuit against Honeywell, waiting for Google to, get acqu- to acquire Nest. So I was talking to cool people like that. And it's like, Incredible. it opens your eyes. It opens your eyes. It's like, okay, entrepreneurship is a path. Let's go figure it out. That's an incredible story. I love that. So social entrepreneurship was sort of that, that curiosity point for you, that catalytic mechanism, if you will, mm-hmm. that sort of was that catalyst that said, hey, this is cool. Let's switch gears from animator and animation into entrepreneurship for you. So you studied see, business. Yeah, you're right. It's, it's not like a switch because it's all about creation. And mm-hmm. I cared about, you know, now that I'm more it's a, like learned, not perfectly learned, but now that I know a little bit more about business and stuff like that, like this whole capitalism versus social enterprise, like there, there's no difference. You have to be profitable to, and then what's what you do with those profits. I was talking to like an up nonprofit board here in San Diego. Like they do like support for nonprofits and stuff like that all over San Diego. San Diego Venture Group. And yeah, like, I don't care if you're a non-for-profit or a for-profit, you need to tr- deliver value to the marketplace, get profit from that and be able to measure and invest that accordingly. It's the, it's the issue of like selfishness or greed that gets in the way and people are like, oh, capitalism is terrible. Like, no, it's not. Capitalism is, is, is an answer. When I say it's the only answer, but you need to be able to grow something and actually create an impact and focus on that. So that's what really drew me. It's about creation. And I didn't think it was like moving away from animation. I just think it was moving towards uh, quote unquote, ultimate creativity, creating something in whatever market, helping whoever I want for, et cetera, et cetera. Just being able to do that. Absolutely. And I think that's the exact definition of capitalism is helping whoever you want. And yeah. then, and then you're right. It's, it's, um, it's not only about that service in a creative way because you do need to add value. Right. Mm-hmm. But on the nonprofit side, I really like how you delineated how it's just simply how you reinvest those funds. And, um, both, both do need money. Money is, is sort of the lifeblood of every company. It is yeah. the lifeblood of every company. You can't survive without it as uh, as unfortunate as that might sound to some people. It's, it's the truth. So yeah, thank I mean, you. that's, the currency of exchange and it's uh but it's looking again and i know some sometimes it's fluff talk where it's like oh focus on impact and the profits will come it's like well yes but focus on value yes. first and then you'll be able to create you know whatever you want to create absolutely amazing wow raul you've shared so many cool things with us from being your authentic self to using automation intelligently to dropping the, uh, the, the, the tool that you mentioned, and I, for some reason, my brain is, uh, is missing that again, the, the lead. Oh, lead baller. lead, lead baller. baller. Yeah. Lead baller. That was absolutely phenomenal. A huge technique there for people to possibly test. Um, this has been absolutely incredible. Do you have any final words of advice before we wrap up the show for our marketing and entrepreneur listeners? Start now. If there's something that you actually thought was useful and that you want to apply, don't wait till tomorrow. Don't wait to do it now. I love that. Don't forget to get Rebels Insights starting December 8th. Of course, this show will air after that. So go get it right now. It's, uh, it's dogoodwork.io slash insights. Is that correct? Correct. Forward slash awesome. insights. And if you want to reach Rebel, you can, you can reach him through uh, via email. Um, if that's okay with you, Rebel. I guess yeah, no, I, email, email. The website, okay. if you go to dogoodwork.io, you'll be able to have a contact me. 
Perfect. whatever methodology works best for you, email, not paper mail. We don't do snail mail as much as anymore, but there's email, <laughs> there's LinkedIn, there's Facebook, there's Messenger, there's Instagram, uh, whatever Everything. fits your preference. But uh, yeah, I'm reachable. I'm not going to say no to a conversation. That's wonderful. Well, thank you so much for being on the show, Raul. It's, uh, it's been a real pleasure. We've learned a lot from you. That's a wrap.